So many conflicting reports on whether or not they are ready for the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. I've heard that the water is brown. In fact, our friend Stacy St. Clair of the Tribune tweet out a, or I should say tweeted out a picture of some rather nasty looking water. I understand you have to sit side by side in a kind of a communal sort of uh, commode mm-hmm. situation. I understand you have to be careful when you're walking down the street lest you fall into the open manholes because they have not replaced the the manhole covers for some reason. I understand that there's uh, trouble with toothpaste this morning, in fact. Let's begin there. In Russia, on our turnkey.pro answer line, Stacy St. Clair, welcome back to Chicago, at least over the radio. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? We're doing well. So your tweet yesterday quite a, uh, uh, created quite a scuttlebutt. I saw you up on Fox News Channel. And how many uh, retweets did you receive, and did you take any heat from the Russians for making them look bad? Um, <laughs> well, I did. I stopped looking at how many um, retweets. I know it was in the thousands, and then I just sort of gave up on following it. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the Russians um, aren't happy. I'm getting a lot of uh, tweets from Russians that are very apparently very angry with me, but I can't really understand what they're saying because it's in their own language. So that's like that's awesome. People hate you, but you have no idea what they're saying to you. So it's sort of the way to go, I but, think. But you're telling the idea. truth. I mean, it was so disgusting to see that coming out of the, the faucet there. What did it smell like? Um, you know, it didn't really, it didn't really smell, or maybe it was, I was so, like, shocked by the color that came out. I, none of my other senses worked. Um, but I don't remember it having any kind of smell. I just remember thinking, like, I have never seen anything like this. Well, water in one hotel. Kind of floating in it. Water in one hotel notwithstanding. How do the Russians appear to be prepared for the opening of the Olympics? And let's talk about the security concerns first. Is it completely right. oppressive? Does it look like they're way over the top with this uh, steel ring that they've imposed? Um, no, it, you know, it's not oppressive, actually. I, I was in London two years ago for the Summer Games, and, you know, the British military ran all the security. And here it's, it's private contractors running the security. So there's a much bigger military presence, I felt, in, in London than there, there is here. And the security is a little bit sort of like hit and miss, like, you know, at the bobsled venue, they, when I was being patted down, they even, like, ran their fingers through my hair to, I, I don't know what, to see if I was, like, hiding contraband in there or something. Mm-hmm. And then in other places, I set off the alarms, and they go, eh, and they kind of wave you through. So it's sort of hit and miss, I think, when they're going to be extra cautious and when they're not. Now, are you staying in the Olympic Village or near it? There's two sort of Olympic areas. There's one in the coast and one in the mountains. And I'm in I'm in the mountains. And I'm in the media village in the mountains. Yes. What is the overall feeling with the athletes themselves? Do they seem to be concerned about security or terrorism, or are they just young kids going about their business? I think in a lot of uh, respects, they're just young kids going about their business. They have you know incredible security. Um, my colleague, Brian Casella, who was a photog, was out in the athlete's village down by the coast today. And um, the U.S. team has been told, you know, do not, every country they hang their flags from their balconies. And the U.S. team has been told not to hang their flags um, so they don't make themselves targets. Of but course, again, the terrorists. Only without flag hanging. Right. All so. the terrorists have to do is look for the balconies without the flags, and there's where the Americans are it, staying. It, exactly. So, um, but uh, yeah, I think the athletes are just. Sort of, they have a job to do. They're pretty focused people anyway, and they're just doing it. And then Chris um, uh, Vogt, who's a bobsledder for the uh, U.S. men, is a former um, Iraq War veteran. He's an Army captain. He says that he feels comfortable about how the security's been doing here. I think he's sort of kind of been the voice of the team. So there's two events that are going to take place today, but opening ceremonies are tomorrow. Tell me about slope style and this team figure skating. What's that? Uh, well, team figure skating, it's, it's basically sort of a way to get more figure skating on television, right? Because that is the rating um, bonanza for, uh, at least for American TV. Mm-hmm. And so what, what they're doing is, like, you know, the men, the women, the pairs, and the dance, they're all just going to compete a second time, and their scores will be combined, and they'll be a medalist. And uh. the United States should medal in that in some respect. I'm not sure where they'll, where they'll place but they'll medal in it in some respect, I think. I would find figure skating somewhat palatable if they let all the teams compete at once because that that <laughs> has a potential for ra- real yeah, mayhem like a roller derby. yeah that's what i'd yeah, like to see derby. otherwise i find it just really really dull very boring oh come on 
I uh, love figure skating. Looking ahead here, how long are these winter games expected to last? And have you heard, based on your interviewing of either the athletes themselves or dignitaries or people along or or even people there observing the games, do you think anybody is going to have an overtly pro-gay demonstration and kind of throw that up uh, right in Putin's face? Um, I, I haven't heard of any, um, you know, ways of, of being that overt. The athletes have been warned by the USOC not to take a stand, that these games are not supposed to be political. They're supposed to be above um, political bickering. However, there have been athletes who've spoken out. Bodie Miller mm-hmm. spoke out, the U.S. skier. Um, Ashley Wagner, U.S. figure skater, um, she has spoken out several times and did so again yesterday, saying that... Um, she has gay members of her family, and she's just not going to be sit quietly here while people ask her if it's okay for uh, gay people to be treated as criminals in Russia. Is she expected to uh, win a medal? She could. She could. She finished um, fourth in the world last year, so she could easily sneak onto the podium here. Because could she get arrested for making statements like that? No, you, you, uh, they're, they're not going to arrest uh, a U.S. female figure skater for saying she doesn't agree with the law. I think that would be such a good <laughs> PR crisis for them. Um, the, the law is more like you can't um, show like public displays of affection. That it's sort of in that realm. I'm expecting at um, some point one of our athletes or somebody sympathetic to you know a pro-gay agenda will, yeah. during a medal presentation on the podium, put their fist up like it was done in 68 Mexico City with a black glove, and maybe this time a pink glove. I'm not saying that to be funny, but I can see that happening actually at some point during the Olympics. And then Putin will be smart not to respond. Well, I mean, I think the smart thing for him, right, you said, you said is not to respond. I know the U.S. athletes have been warned again and again and again not to make any kind of showing like that. Um, whether they follow it is another thing. I mean, there's some, you know, pretty pretty wacky sports uh, here now. The extreme sports guys, they don't really care to follow the rules, but that's what their sport's all about. So we'll see what happens. Stacy, thank you for the update. Stay safe. We'll talk to you again, Bye. we hope, and we'll read you at the Tribune. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, guys. Stacy St. Clair from the Chicago Tribune in Russia, joining us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's news.